Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, we're going to talk about one of the most important and interesting, at least in my opinion, aspects of chemistry, and that is thermochemistry. So you can probably already uh, make a pretty good attempt at guessing what thermochemistry is, owing to the fact that we have a picture of a power plant here on this slide. Uh, but let's actually go into the scientific definition of thermochemistry and see how far that takes us. So according to my chemistry textbook, the definition of thermochemistry is the study of the relationships between chemistry and energy. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. So chemical reactions, uh, some of them release energy, uh, some of them require energy, some of them release a lot of energy, some of them release a little bit of energy, some chemical reactions require a lot of energy to get going, some of them don't require much energy, and so on and so forth. So we're starting to get the idea of what thermochemistry is, but in order to understand this we need to be able to define the word energy. Now again to define the word energy I just kinda took another look in my chemistry textbook and I found uh, the energy is the capacity to do work. So it's kind of this cat and mouse game we're playing where each new definition that we look at begs a question about the definition of another word. So with thermochemistry, you know, now we have to define energy. And then with energy, the capacity to do work, well, what the heck is work? So now we got to define work. And uh, according to my chemistry text, uh, once again, uh, the definition of work is the result of a force acting through a distance. So again, energy. If something has energy, that means it has the capacity to exert a force on another object and move it through some distance. Okay, so now that we uh, have just been inundated with vocabulary, it seems only fitting that we introduce a little bit more vocabulary, right? And so uh, we're going to talk about some types of energy. The first type of energy that we're going to talk about is called potential energy. And the potential energy that an object has is associated with the object's position. <clears throat> Potential energy could also be associated with the composition of an object, so how that object is put together. And of course, we're going to elaborate on potential energy a little later in this playlist. So for instance, you see this little scientist over here. He's holding up an apple relatively high off of the ground. That apple, simply because of its position within Earth's gravitational field, has a lot of potential energy. And of course, if he released that apple, uh, the apple would fall. And the reason why that's true is because uh, scientists have determined that nature tends to proceed in a way that minimizes its potential energy. So whenever possible, nature is always going to try to do whatever it can to lower its potential energy and get it as low as possible. The second type of energy that we're going to discuss is called kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy of an object is associated with its motion. So something that is in motion has kinetic energy. Something that is at rest has no kinetic energy. And finally, the third type of energy that we're going to talk about in this video, there are more types of energy, but for now we can just limit our discussion to three. The third type is called thermal energy. So here's a nice uh, photograph of the sun that I found. And as you've probably already figured out, thermal energy is associated with an object's temperature. And thermal energy is actually a type of kinetic energy because thermal energy originates from motion, just as regular old kinetic energy, kinetic energy does. Thermal energy originates from the motion of particles. So you have atoms and molecules moving around. Uh, you may have some subatomic particles moving around really fast. All of those atomic, molecular, subatomic particle motions uh, are what uh, are the origin of thermal energy. So again, we have potential energy that's due to position or composition, uh, kinetic energy that's due to motion, and then we have thermal energy which is associated with temperature. And remember, thermal energy is a type of kinetic energy. So the last thing we're going to do before we wrap this video up is talk about some of the most common units of energy. And there's a lot of units for, of energy out there, and uh, we're going to talk about just a few here in this video. Now the SI unit, remember SI stands for International System of Units, the international unit for energy is called the Joule, and it has the symbol capital J. And the Joule is a derived unit, so it comes from other SI units. And the definition of the Joule is one kilogram times square meters divided by square seconds. Okay, now the Joule 
is not a very large unit of energy. There's really not a lot of energy in a joule. And so oftentimes you're going to see energies reported in kilojoules, where of course one kilojoule is equal to 1,000 joules. Now another common unit of energy is the calorie, which I'm sure you are familiar with. And that has the symbol lowercase cal. And the definition of the calorie is the amount of energy that's required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. And if you wanted to convert between calories and joules, you could use this relationship over here, where we have one calorie is equal to 4.184 joules. So we can see uh, in this relationship that the calorie is a larger unit of energy than the joule, because there's more than one joule in one calorie. Closely related to the calorie is the nutritional calorie. And the only thing different about the nutritional calorie, at least if we're looking at the symbols, the only thing uh, that differentiates the symbols of regular old calories and nutritional calories is that in a nutritional calorie, the C is capitalized. So it's capital C-A-L. And there are 1,000 little c calories in a big C nutritional calorie. And so when you look at the nutrition facts, uh, on the back of your milk or your donuts or whatever, uh, what you're reading, uh, and it talks about all the different calories and you know, calories from fat, total calories per serving, all that stuff. Uh, those calories are the nutritional calories, the big C calories. So if you take those calories and multiply them by a thousand, that's how many little C calories you have uh, in one serving of whatever you happen to be eating. Now the last unit of energy that we're going to talk about before we uh, are all done here is called the kilowatt hour, or KWH. And the kilowatt hour is a very common unit of energy. Um, when I get my electric bill in the mail, um, before I pay the bill, I always look at uh, you know, how much energy I've consumed in the last month. And those energies are always reported in units of uh, kilowatt hours. And if we wanted to convert between joules and kilowatt hours, we could use this relationship down here, where we have one kilowatt hour is equal to 3.6 times 10 to the 6 joules. So almost 4 million joules are just in a single kilowatt hour. So the kilowatt hour is a relatively large amount of energy. And uh, you know we all, at least here in the States, uh, a lot of us uh, tend to consume a lot of energy in our homes. Okay, so I think that's a good place to stop. I uh, hope you uh, found this video at least somewhat helpful, and I will see you in the next video. So take it easy.